as promised from my Instagram post yesterday, I was going to send out a long form video where I can really explain my process of improving internal rotation or pronation of the foot along with internal rotation up the chain because if we are stuck in a state of more external rotation at the hips, we're gonna be driving more supination at the foot. So if you look at me and I'm standing here and I squeeze my glutes together in the back, you can see how my femurs are going to externally rotate more. So as I squeeze, that's gonna cause a systemic external rotation down the chain. And now my feet are going into a more supinated position because of that. So I can do my pronation drills and help drive that internal rotation and get the calcaneus to tip forward into that anterior tilt. But if I'm not following up with addressing what's happening at the pelvis and what's happening at the thorax, then how long is that change going to hold? So I wanted to go through with you all my full process and how I might coach the pronation drills but also coach a lengthening of the backside of the pelvis to allow for internal rotation at the femurs and a lengthening of the chest wall and getting that expansion here so that we don't continue to drop our pump handle and drive our rib cage down and squeeze through the glute. So we wanna be able to lift without this big rib flare here you want to get the ribs back without dropping the sternum down. So we need sternum chest wall expansion for internal rotation up top. We need posterior glute lengthening for internal rotation at the hips. And then we need to follow that up with our pronation drills to allow for internal rotation at the tibia and at the foot. Okay, so my favorite drill for really opening up the backside of the pelvis, plus working on getting this pump handle and chest wall expanded and up um, is gonna be a bare position. And I like to do it against the wall so I can get some hamstrings involved. So what I want you to do is set up on all fours. You're gonna put your toes on the wall. Your heels do not have to touch. From this position, I want you to push away from the floor. So it's very important that you push away, but you don't round through the shoulders because that's going to compress this area and we want to imagine that this is a headlight and we want that headlight lifted and looking forward so we can see so i'm going to push forward i'm going to lift through my chest in that position i want to exhale ribs come back again ribs don't come down they just come back so i'm in this nice exhale position pushing through the floor with my sternum up. So that's gonna allow me to take a breath and feel the pressure push into my chest. Now let's talk about the pelvis. So I wanna gently pull my toes up the wall so I've got some hamstring engagement. And what I want you to do is imagine that your sit bones are pulling apart. So if I were to tuck under here, my sit bones are coming closer together and if I, get myself to just go into a small little anterior tilt, my sit bones are coming apart, okay? So I want my sit bones coming apart. I want my sternal headlight coming up and out. I wanna push from the floor and then I wanna exhale, ribs back. I wanna hold that position. Toes are pulling up the wall. Keep the sit bones nice and lengthened. Take an inhale. Imagine relaxing the pelvic floor as it pushes down into the bottom to spread. And then exhale, ribs come back, inhale, relax, exhale, contract. Inhale, relax. Feel those sit bones coming apart and opening up. Exhale, relax. Inhale, fill the chest. Exhale, contract. Ribs come back. Inhale. One more exhale. So 
you can do that as many times as you need to help open all those areas up. Um, and then the next thing I would have someone do, especially if they have a really tight pelvic floor and they just have a very hard time letting go, is I would put them in more of an inverted rock back position. So in this position, I'm really letting those sit bones come up towards the ceiling and taking an inhale there, pushing the pressure back between the sit bones, letting them open up and exhale out. Contract the pelvic floor. You may feel more of the anterior or front part. Inhale, relax. And you could repeat that for another 10 breaths. And then finally, if you have a really hard time getting the chest wall up, I find it easier to flip over onto your back for the chest. So you can start, especially if you tend to um, go into an all fours position and use your upper traps and your neck gets really tight and it's hard to hold yourself up and really get your serratus to do what it's supposed to. If you're one of those people, you wanna start on your back with your elbows by your side. So it's a little bit easier to get this expansion. So you can definitely separate these things out. So I'm gonna lay on my back and you just wanna be in relaxed position. I'm gonna take my elbows and just gently push into the floor. Um, in terms of your back, I just want you to be in a nice, comfortable position. I don't care if your back's flat, if that's your natural position, or if you've got a little bit of an anterior tilt, that's fine also. So I'm gonna focus here on pulling the elbows back, keeping my chin up slightly so my airway's open. I'm gonna take an inhale. And on the exhale, I wanna take my ribs and imagine them going down towards the floor. So I don't wanna crunch through the upper part of my abdomen and do this and have my head fall backwards. I want to keep myself nice and long through the sternum as my ribs go back in space. I'm gonna feel some deep abdominals here and I wanna keep a little tension on there as I start to inhale so it fills the chest. And then I'm gonna exhale, ribs come back. Inhale, fill the chest. Exhale, ribs come back. And you can repeat that also for another 10 or so breaths. Okay, now that you know how to get your body in a more internally rotated position or more pronated position, let's talk about the foot. So I'm gonna point the camera down so you can see my foot and then I'm gonna also let you see it um, from a close up view. So what I wanna focus on here is the lateral part of my heel on the outside here and then the inner part of my heel a little bit up from that slightly, okay? So I'm gonna keep my left foot behind me and as I straighten my knee back and my body comes back with me, I want to be able to find the outside of my heel. So as I come back, I can sense and feel underneath my heel more to the lateral side. Now, as I go forward, I wanna let my knee push forward and I wanna slowly feel my weight push into the middle part of my heel. So I have you start just going from that mid heel and then straightening and back to the lateral heel. So all I want you to think about at first is just rolling from the medial heel back to the lateral edge of the heel. So super simple, roll to the medial heel and then back to the lateral point part of the heel. So when I first started coaching pronation drills, I realized that I was pushing way too quickly into the forefoot, which was making it so that I was missing that true pronation and driving into the forefoot and kind of everting a little bit more. We really want that arch to spread. And the um, wonderful David Gray, taught me um, this technique where you're just trying to get the calcaneus moving first. So if you can start with that, kind of back it up, just feel the heel rocking and going from medial to lateral, and then you can start pushing the knee more forward. So let's see what that looks like when we come a little bit more forward here. So I'm gonna start with my little rock. So I've got my supinated position, lateral heel here. And as I go forward, I'm gonna let my foot 
and my heel go into the medial part of my heel. Now, I don't want to drive forward into the toes where I feel my heel getting light and I lose that sensation of the middle of my foot spreading. So I'm going to go lateral. And as I come to that medial heel, I'm going to start to let my knee go a little bit further. You can let your hips turn away from you. And I can feel the spread of my midfoot, but I'm still heel heavy. Heel heavy and a little bit of weight into the forefoot in that first met head, but not all of the weight into the met head where I'm going to grip with my toes. So I want to start back again, knee back, and I'm slowly going to come forward. Take your time with this. Find that medial heel. Let the foot spread and open. And then as you come back, slowly push that heel into the ground and feel yourself roll to the lateral side of the heel. And then you're going to come back. If you find that when you roll back and straighten your knee, your big toe wants to come up off the floor, you can put a wedge under it just to make sure you keep contact. A lot of times when people come back into supination, they lose and sort of roll to the outside of the foot because of the position at the hip. So if you need something to put contact, you can. So I'm going to roll forward again, feel that inside heel heavy as I move into my, into my forefoot slightly. Everything's lengthening. And then I'm going to pull back up to the lateral side of my heel. So that's it. It's a pretty simple but detailed and slow movement with control. As you do this, if you're doing it really well, a lot of times you'll feel like that glute just all of a sudden starts to turn on and do exactly what it's supposed to. So whether you're more of a flat-footed presentation, and feet turned out, or you're more of a glute clenching feet turned in or supinated, but straightforward. These pronation drills are going to be really useful because they're going to help you to regain both pronation and supination. And the same thing goes for the, the bear, the rock back, and the chest wall expansion. In either of those scenarios, you probably need a little bit of length in those um, places. So I hope this was helpful and thank you all for being signed up for my newsletter and I hope to do more of these in the future.